So undoubtedly, the two most important muscles in the calf are the gastrocnemius muscle and the soleus muscle. In this video, we're going to look at the differences between these two, both anatomically and what we need to know in clinical practice too. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So let's start with our 3D anatomy model and look at some of the key anatomical differences between these two muscles, starting with the gastrocnemius. So the gastrocnemius is the more superficial of the two muscles, meaning that it's closer to the skin and it has a distinctive bulging appearance and is what most people generally recognize as the calf muscle. So the origin of this muscle, it has two heads, a lateral head and a medial head. So the lateral head, as we can see here, originates from the upper posterolateral surface of the lateral femoral condyle. The medial head originates from the posterior surface of the medial femoral condyle. Notice really importantly that both of these tendons cross at the knee joint, running from the tibia over the knee and into the femur. So as for the insertion of this muscle, it inserts via the Achilles tendon into the calcaneus of the foot. And of course, the Achilles tendon is what we all know the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle for. So in terms of the nerve supply, the nerve supply for this muscle comes from the tibial nerve, which originates from the nerve roots S1 and S2. So when we think about the function of the gastrocnemius, as we mentioned, it originates from past the knee joint, which gives it two key functions. First of all, plantar flexion of the foot, which is its main function, but because of that crossover with the knee, it makes this muscle a weaker flexor of the knee joint. What we also know about the gastrocnemius is that it's a really powerful muscle. It allows us to generate a lot of force very quickly, but for shorter durations, and therefore we use it for more explosive activity, such as jumping or propelling ourselves forward in sports, for example. So next, let's look at the soleus muscle. This is a deeper, flatter muscle, and we can see it here sitting underneath the gastrocnemius. So its origin is from the soleal line of the posterior tibia, as well as the medial border of the tibia. And it also has lateral insertions to the fibula head and the posterior border of the fibula. Then, like the gastrocnemius, it runs down the posterior tibia and inserts into the Achilles tendon and therefore into the calcaneus of the foot. The nerve supply for this muscle comes from the tibial nerve at S1, S2, just like the gastrocnemius. Now, unlike the gastrocnemius, the soleus muscle only crosses the ankle joint. As we saw with gastrocnemius, it also crosses the knee joint, like you can see on this diagram here, whereas the soleus does not. That means that the soleus does not have a role in knee range of movement and instead is exclusively used as a plantar flexor of the foot. Whilst the gastrocnemius has that more explosive function in terms of plantar flexion, the soleus is more of an ongoing endurance stability muscle. Its main role is to be able to sustain both postural stability and plantar flexion of the ankle and repeated plantar flexion over a long period of time, such as if we're walking or standing. So how does this help us in clinical practice? Well, effectively, there's two key things that we might need to think about when it comes to rehabilitation. First of all, we need to focus on both explosive movements as well as sustained ongoing endurance movements. Because as we said, the gastrocnemius focuses on explosive, powerful movements, whereas the soleus is that endurance, repetitive movement activity. So therefore, make sure that you're including a low number of reps with a high amount of power in your rehab for gastrocnemius, as well as a higher number of repetitions with a lower load for the soleus muscle. And then if we think about the type of exercise we might use, with the gastrocnemius running over two joints, this muscle will engage more when the knee is in an extended position, whereas the soleus will engage more when the knee is in a flexed position. So make sure you are including calf raises in your rehab with a patient having a flex knee for the soleus, as well as the traditional extended knee for the gastrocnemius. We can also think about a seated calf raise with the knee flexed for soleus. Just make sure to add sufficient load for this one in sitting because we're not pushing up body weight like with the standing calf raise. 
So everyone, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to our channel for all our best updates. Remember, we have also loads of information on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, as well as on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.